Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm sure many of you, like me, enjoy a delicious glass of Scottish malt whisky. Um, but in addition to this iconic global product, the whisky industry also produces large volumes of problematic byproducts, residues, which present the industry with both an economic and an environmental cost. There are over 100 malt distilleries in Scotland, and collectively they produce over 700,000 tonnes of draft, uh, the spent grains which are left behind at the beginning of the production process, and over 2 billion litres of pot ale, a copper contaminated effluent left behind in the copper stills at the end of the process. Although these have marginal and limited use in the animal feed market, they really present a major disposal uh, <coughs> problem to the industry. Kelter Renewables is commercialising an innovative and patented process technology that converts these two byproducts into high-value commodities, including biochemicals, biofuels, and high-protein animal feed. The main product is biobutanol, which is a direct drop-in replacement for petrol. Our value proposition, we feel, is a real win-win. We can provide a long-term sustainable disposal solution for the whisky industry with real traceability, and we can produce significant volumes of need commodities, which are currently mostly derived from fossil fuels. By utilising low-cost residues as our input feedstock, we derive a strong competitive advantage over our competitors who use high-cost crops. And with our products being derived from organic residues, they have very strong green credentials. If we use our biobutanol as a direct replacement for petrol, this represents a 90% greenhouse gas emission saving compared to using that petrol. If we could secure most of the whisky residues in Scotland, our niche market product sales would be over £100 million. But with whisky industries all around the world, and we can also apply this process to other drinks industries, agricultural residues and the residues from other food production, the global market is massive. The Celtic Renewables process is based on a century-old industrially proven technology, which is called ABE fermentation. And this was used around the world commonly um, up until the, the, the 1960s. It's still um, happening in China and India today. But the innovation behind the company was developed by Professor Martin Tangney, who's one of the few internationally recognized experts in, international, in ABE fermentation. And Martin is a co-founder of Celtic Renewables along with myself. Martin's original research led to the filing of two process patents. Um, and that covers the inventive adaptation of that original proven process to novel feedstocks, the byproducts of whiskey production. The company now owns both those patents and has a strong IP position. As you can see from the process shown above, we combine the draft and pot ale together. With some pretreatment, we then do a bacterial fermentation, and that makes four products. Acetone, a valuable chemical commodity, butanol and ethanol, valuable chemi chemical commodities and biofuels, and high protein animal feed. And our only real byproduct is water, which we can reuse. Each of our products will be traded into huge global commodity markets, which are all growing. The Celtic Renewables Innovation and Compelling Value Proposition has won a host of cross sector awards, from clean tech to energy, from automotive to investment sectors, showing the strong third party validation. The company started operations in early 2012, and since then we have raised almost £3 million in seed funding from private investment and matching innovation grants. The company has attracted significant stakeholder support from the Scottish Government, Scottish Enterprise, Zero Waste Scotland, and most recently from the Department of Energy and Climate Change in Westminster. The funding and support has enabled Celtic Renewables to make significant progress since those early days. We've built out a brilliant and dynamic team with microbiologists, engineers, and commercial experts. We've scaled up the original bench top research 1,000 fold and validated and tested it at pilot scale through a partnership with Europe's flagship biotech facility, Biobase Europe. We have separated and tested our four products, and we have developed a robust industrial process blueprint with integrated engineering design, which will be the basis for our first production plant. We have a partnership with the distillery Tully Varden and a strong stakeholder relationship with the Scotch Whiskey Association. And for such a young Scottish company, we've built a positive reputation and a very strong media profile, attracting coverage around the world. 
In February this year, we announced the world's first ever sample of butanol derived from whiskey residues, and that received global coverage in over 300 media channels. The next major step for Celtic Renewables is the development and construction of a commercial demonstration plant here in Scotland. This will be a 20 to 25 million pound capital project, and when it's operational, it will process 100,000 tonnes of whisky distillery residues, which is only 2 to 3 per cent of the available material. Whilst it will primarily be a showpiece exemplar of the process, it's a sufficient scale to make revenue and profit and can offer an IRR of 6 to 8 per cent. Um, without need for any subsidies. It's green and profitable. The plant will produce over a million litres of biofuel, and that could reduce carbon emissions annually by over 10,000 tonnes. The plans for the plant are well advanced. We're close to securing a site at Grangemouth where there are operational and technology synergies. The planning process is underway with Falkirk Council. We have one distillery signed up, and the further two required will be signed up soon. And we have outline, outline offtake agreements for the products from key strategic customers. With regard to financing the plant, Celtic Renewables is shortlisted for a major capital grant from the Department for Transport in Westminster, and we are confident of securing £11 million of grant funding by late July. By the end of 2015, we'll have finalised the funding package for the first plant, and this will enable us to build and commission the plant by early 2017. But during that period, we'll be developing a pipeline of similar projects where we can replicate this process both here in Scotland and build further much larger and more profitable plants internationally. And we'll also complete a range of trials on similar feedstocks. Once the demonstration plant is operational, not only will the company be generating significant revenues, we will have created the process exemplar on which the replication of this process around the world can be based. We're here at CleanTech Innovate to meet potential co-financers of this first plant and potential partners who can realise our vision in developing a major international biotech company headquartered here in Scotland. Thank you.